just don't care And if I said what about Breakfast at Tiffany She said I think I Remember the film And as I recall I think we both kind of liked it And I said well that's One thing we Hey, how you doing? Justin back with you today to check out Deep Blue Something Massive hit Breakfast at Tiffany's and I have absolutely no idea how I've managed to go this long without doing this song. I used to play this in cover bands back in Tasmania when I still lived there. Like, this is an old tune and a big hit and it's really good fun to play and I really can't understand why I haven't done a lesson on it before, but we're going to address that right now. It's a really good song as a grower for beginners as well because it can actually be really simplified. It's a great one to play along with the original recording or a back and track so you can get that kind of playing in the band feeling even with very simple strumming and simple chord changes. But there's quite a lot going on if you want to get a little bit more into the embellishments, the stuff that we cover in grade two of my beginner course like sus chords, these kind of additional things. Uh, but it's also quite an up-tempo one. If you're going to do all of that strumming, the strumming's pretty hardcore, it's fast. And there's some accurate picking required if we're going to get the bass note trick in the chorus, which may or may not be on the original recording uh, with this guitar part, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So let's start off by taking a look at the chords and keeping it super simple. So we've only got a D chord, an A chord, and a G chord for the whole song. That's it. Just those three chords. If you're not familiar with how to play the chords or you need some extra help with making the chord changes, you're not sure why I'm playing G like that or why I'm leaving my first finger off, any of those kind of questions, go and check out the beginner's course on my website. It's all over there. It's all free. A lot of detail, much more than I want to go into in a lesson just now. So let's get back and check out the chord progression. So the intro is going D, 2, 3, 4, G to A. intro and the verse, you'll say the G's got A and D chord, no G chord A to D from, and G's for A. And then we're into the chorus. The chorus, again, same three chords, but a different order. Now we start with the D and then go A to G. So if D says, what about A chord and G chord, she D, I think I, A chord the G, and as D recalls, I think we A kind of G it. And D said, well, that's Anything we've cheated, ba da 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 I think I'm like, should I teach it to them? Should I not teach it to them? I think I'd rather not, and I'd rather you have a go at working that one out on your own. It's really, really simple. I'm going to show it to you quickly, but so you can kind of see roughly where my fingers are going. But there's lots of different ways of playing. I'm not even sure this is the right one. It's a really good one to work out by ear. It's really not difficult. And if you've never tried to work out something on your own before, this would be a fantastic place to start. So let me just show you that really quickly before we get into much more. <laughs> Have a little go, see if you like. It's not part of the actual lesson because I would encourage you to have a go at doing some of that stuff by ear.
Now, the actual strumming pattern on this song is pretty intense, and if you're a beginner, there's probably a middle ground there between just strumming once per chord or once per bar and then trying to find something that's not r ridiculously fast. And the solution here is Old Faithful. Down, down, up, up, down. So, you say we got nothing in common No common ground to start from What's happening there? Where there's two chords in the bar, I'm changing the chord early. So D down, up, up, down, G, G, up, up, down. Okay, that re does require a fairly speedy change from the G to the A. If you miss the G in the transition and hit the open strings, it's not really going to matter, right? So you go this, if I do it slowly, down, doesn't matter. Down, down, Just hitting the open strings as I'm transitioning from the G here. Not ideal, but you wouldn't notice. No one would notice that that's happening. In fact, it happens on most records. If there's a, a strum on the end after four, and especially if it's a high tempo and there's a chord change, it's probably going to be open strings. doesn't make any difference. Don't worry about it and don't stress about trying to jump that chord so quick. You want to be relaxed and you want to be feeling fluid and enjoying the music and enjoying the feeling. And if you try and put too much kind of focus on that kind of thing, you're likely to just, you know, fall off your skateboard. So let me just play that through so you can see how that fits in. So you say we got nothing. it works pretty well. It doesn't sound the same because the original recording is so high energy that it does feel a little different. So let's have a little bit of a look at that one now. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, one E and up to E and three E and a four E and a one E and up to E and three E and a four E and a one up to E and three E and a four E and a one E and up to E and three E and a four E and a down up up down up up down up down up down up up down up up down up down up that's how you need to do it with the chords muted first of all and get used to the pattern down up up down up up down up down up down up up down up up down up down up one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e and three e and four e and counting it especially fast is really difficult so i think the thing i would recommend is keeping the hand moving consistently because that's the key thing there's no change there the hand moves consistently down up up down up down up down that's the movement it's making. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. And it's not exactly strict to that. That would be with this kind of pattern, you want to learn the pattern, the 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 like a generalized version of the pattern first. Get used to that, playing that, then applying that, and you'll probably find that it kind of loosens itself up a little bit with some practice. So You'll find that you put in some extra strums sometimes, you take out strums other times, that's okay. It's just about getting the feeling of that pattern where the accents fall, where the, where the, where the essence of the pattern is, I guess, because you will change it. it will add, you will add strums and you will take some away just as part of the flow of the tune and where the chords fall and all of that. So with all of those kind of complex patterns, you want to 
learn a bass one. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. It's the pattern. Okay? One E and a two E and three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and E and a four E and a. Okay? Practice it real slow, get it right. Don't let the hand stop moving. Make sure you're aware of that. And then practice it up to speed with the mute on. So you can play along with the original. to get that feel playing along with the original recording to help yourself settle into the groove with it okay that would be my recommendation for figuring out how that works now the second part of that particularly if you're going to go to town with all the embellishments is working out where the embellishments fall within the strumming pattern so let's have a look at a close-up of that now So here we've got D, up, up, down, up, up, down. There's a down flick with a little finger. So it's D, sus2, so lifting off the second finger. There's little finger goes down on the third fret thin string and flicks off. You can see third finger stays down. And it's kind of like it goes, it sounds like it's a sus going onto that G chord. You get it. it does sound like it's not it, but again, the key thing here is realizing that that's the set pattern. And when you go to apply it, it's going to end up sounding a little different. And extra strums will kind of become apparent. And that's okay. Let that happen. Uh, the more you listen to the original recording and practice it, the more it'll kind of morph into exactly what either whatever you want or exactly what's on the record depending on the level of detail that you want from yourself so down up up down up up down flick. down up up down up up down flick. down flick again there's little little finger going down <laughs> now i can't remember if it's a a sus2 or sus4 flick off Okay, either one is going to sound good actually, so I'm just going to leave it at, you can choose which one you do. I think it's that sus4. just want to practice it nice and slow and work those embellishments in until they become natural feeling. If you if you start too fast and go it's just you're asking for a nightmare, right? You want to get things right before you start trying to speed them up a lot. Even when I just revised this song, even though I've been playing this song for forever, when I sat down to relearn it again, I sat down, I played it really slowly a bunch of times trying to get it under my fingers, trying to get it back in my musical imagination so I knew what I wanted this, what sound I wanted to come out of the guitar. So don't be in a hurry. Um, one other little kind of advanced trick that you might want to check out. The original recording in the chorus has a, a power chords thing starts. Uh, and one of the changes, it's got this. What about uh, breakfast at Tiffany's? There's this G with a B bass. So, da, 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 da. A really nice little chord progression actually but you can do it with the chords as well if you go so I, I do G with a B bass and then move to the bass note. So, That's the bit I'm trying to show you, the G with the B bass to G. If you find that hard, just go straight to G. I just think it sounds, it's got that little... 
it's just got that little thing that's a little bit more authentic, sounds a little cooler, a little bit different as well. It's one of those songs where, like I said, it's a, it's a grower. You can start real simple with simple chords, simple strumming, then you can morph into kind of do an old faithful. You can start to explore embellishments because even though I've given you like set embellishments as a starting point, you don't have to stick to those ones exactly. You don't have to stick to the same strumming patterns exactly. I would encourage you to get creative with this stuff and just see where it goes. Like try your own thing out. Make these songs your own versions of the songs. You don't have to do a cover song exactly the same as the record, although there's a lot to be learned in doing that. I think Part of the journey should be you getting creative with it, trying to explore your own musicianship and see. You might try a completely different. I said, what about breakfast to Tiffany? She said, okay, that's a pretty bad idea, but you get the idea. But you could just try. I said, what about breakfast to Tiffany? She said, I think I remember the film. Oh, that was kind of in the original recording anyway but just try stuff see what skills you've got see what techniques you've got see if you can change the speed or the style and see what you come up with and don't always be beholden to learning the, the tracks exactly as they sound on the record I think that's a it's a good thing to do but it's better to be creative as well if you dig this song, there's a really great backing track over on my app. So if you haven't checked out the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app, it's full of guitar karaoke tracks. So uh, loads all of the big hits that you'll find in, as part of my beginner song course and all the lessons from my beginner course as well, which is free on the website, but you don't get the songs on the website. So the app has the, the special feature of the songs and some other stuff like a tuner and things like that, the practice, uh, practice login and some of that stuff as well is, is uh, very cool and is only found in the app. So do go and check that out if you haven't seen it lately. Remember that the website is free to sign up and you get the dashboard and you get loads of stuff over on the site as well. We've got Justin Guitar tab so you can have chords and lyrics on the screen as well. Now that's a paid extra feature because of course we have to pay the rights holders. Uh, we're not doing it illegally. So uh, yeah, plenty to explore over at justinguitar.com if you haven't been over in a while. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Appreciate you hitting the subscribe. God, there's loads of things to mention now, isn't there? Uh, there's the app, there's the website, there's subscribe to the thing there's tabs what else is there I don't know whatever you know you get the idea I guess it's part of the YouTube thing now hey you're probably all used to it and how many of you actually make it to the end of the video let me know in the comments if you're one of those few people who made it to the end of the video let me know D give me a uh, give me a triple six in the comments Ooh, just to see just because I'm curious how many people actually get this far in the video so and it'll freak everyone else out <laughs> If everyone else in the comments is just like seeing all these triple six, we're like, the, the devil's been in this video. That's Dave, what's going on with that? That could be kind of fun, right? But only you'll know if you've made it this far in the video. Let's have a bit of a laugh with YouTube. Hey, so uh, have yourself a fantastic day and hopefully I'll see you for much more very soon. Take care. Bye.